Not so long ago, I managed to complete the virtual Everesting challenge on Zwift. I documented this feat in the separate video, so if you haven't seen it yet, here's the link. Today, I'd like to focus on some things I learned during this epic ride and share some tips that may be helpful if you are planning to do this on your own. My name is Daniel Boydo and in this video, I'm sharing 10 takeaways from my Everesting attempt. Interested? Let's go then! As you may know, there are a few variations of the Everesting challenge and the good news is the virtual is by no means the easiest one to complete. That's because you've got a full control over the environment. You are not bothered with the weather outside. You don't care about the rain, the sun or the wind. It's just you, your bike and the climb ahead. Also, you've got all your supplies at hand, the food, the water, the snacks. But the biggest advantage comes from the fact that you don't have to stay on your bike while descending. You can use this time to recover, do some stretching or having a bite. That massively reduces the elapsed time of your attempt. So if you are new to the Everesting, the virtual is the best one to start with. The other thing, choose the climb wisely. Whatever you pick, make sure the hill is not getting too steep, but it's also not too gentle either. The steep climbs require much more power output, but the gentle ones increase the total distance and the time spent on the bike. So you have to balance these two things. Although the Everesting challenge can be completed on four approved apps serving a variety of hills, the more common choice is Zwift with its Alp du Zwift climb. Alp du Zwift is 12 km long with just above 1000 meters in elevation gain, offering an average gradient of 8.5%. 8.5 reps you have to complete gives you a total distance of 215 km. Not bad. I'd say it was a good choice for me and I think it can work for you as well. Tip number three, prepare yourself mentally. You need to know that the Everesting is more of a psychological than a physical game. You can be super fit, but without a strong willpower, you cannot complete the challenge. You can see on my video how miserable I was after rep number six, but I rethought the situation and put myself back in shape. Also, I was tricking my brain into thinking that it was only eight reps to mentally shorten the ride. And that's what really helped me to not give up that time. The Everest thing testing your sanity, that's for sure, but when completed, makes you mentally stronger. So keep riding until you're done. Tip number four, pacing is crucial. I found the best strategy for myself was keeping a consistent power throughout the whole rep. On my first lap, I was testing a different strategy though. I was pushing a bit harder on steeper sections and recovering on the gentle ones, but it didn't work too well for me. So a piece of advice for you. Find your strategy as early as possible and then apply it throughout the rest of the ride. Tip number five. If you choose to Everest on Zwift, you have to learn about the hollow replay or the shadow feature. It's super helpful to keep a consistent pace, at least for a few laps. Make sure you set up a moderate benchmark on your first lap. Be careful, we all tend to push too hard when we feel super fresh. When you've got your baseline, all you need to do is just follow the shadow like on cruise control without thinking too much about the pace anymore. Just keep the shadow inside and you are good. Tip number six. When you've got your baseline, don't be too strict about it though. Remember, this challenge is not about the speed, but about consistency and persistence. Don't feel disappointed if the rep takes longer than you planned. It's not the race. Just lower the pace and keep going. The schedule you came up with is just your gut guess. Adapt to your current feel rather than chase the result. Tip number seven, change your clothes frequently, at least a jersey. Riding indoors makes you sweat much more. There is no way to dry out without the sun and wind you'd experience outdoors. And actually, I was extremely surprised how much my feel and perception changed just because of this simple thing. So yes, prepare a lot of spare clothes and make a good use of them. Tip number eight, take longer breaks. Don't feel tightened to those 10 minute breaks or whatever your descending time is. Rest for as long as you feel you need to, but be careful to not let your body switch into recovery mode. It could be really hard to force it back to do the work again. I think my breaks would have been a little longer, 15 to 20 minutes per lap. It could have given me an opportunity to recover better, but wouldn't have extended the overall time by much. 
Tip number 9. Do some stretching during the breaks. After over an hour of climbing, your leg muscles will tighten and your lower back will hurt. Recovery is not just about the curling yourself up into a ball. Spend some time on a gentle stretch or even a back massage. It doesn't have to take much time, just a minute or two and you'll spot the difference. Tip number 10. Eat little, but often. Make sure you've got a bite every break. Prepare food rich in carbs. You don't want to bonk in the middle of the rep. Aldo Swift is a pretty long climb, so you may need two or three gels on the way. At least that was working perfectly in my case. On the other hand, I think I had too little solid food. Just a few bananas, some porridge and a few slices of pizza. I'm sure I could have done better here. These are some of my tips and thoughts on the Everesting. I hope you'll find them useful while planning your own attempt. What's your best tip on the Everesting? Or maybe you've got other ones? Please let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you next time.